Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Hello, hello everyone, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm so happy to see all of you. Today we're on another live and we have our runaway podcaster here. <laughs> we have our friend and brother, Dr. Ezeluke in person. You see, I gathered them today. I dragged them out and they are here today to talk about this beautiful conversation. How are you doing and how did your week go? How is your weekend starting and how, are, how is it going? Okay. We are the DLBC Singles uh, platform, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and every other uh, social media platform or handle. you find us there. And we are singles. And so married people talk about relationship from the Christian perspective, okay? And then how to build a happy home. That is the essence of our coming here every time you see us. Today we have a topic. As you can see from the topic here, we're talking about convictions. What are biblical convictions about marriage? Looking at it from the 21st century and comparing it, taking it side by side with what the Bible stands is all about. And then we have a couple of verses that we're going to be looking through as we dive into our topic today. Just follow us today. You will, you will, you will learn together. Just follow us faithfully. And if you have any questions, any questions at all about marriage done the 21st centuries, what is headship and all of these topics and our leadership, what is your place as a man in the, in the home? What is God expecting you to do in that home? And you're single, right? So you are preparing. How do I be the correct man, the right man, the ideal man, the God-ordained um, husband in all its function in my home? I guess many of you are asking yourself that question, right? Uh, with, the, with the 21st century kind of marriages that we have, a lot of things are happening. A lot of concepts and a lot of convictions are flying out. So let's see if we can convince you or if we can come to an understanding with these men here, if I can agree with them and if they can agree with me about some of these convictions. Let's go. I want to, I want to first introduce our, um, the other people that are here. I have Mr. David here. Always here. Let's see how 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 it's going to go. Is it going to be polarizing or is he going to agree with me? We'll see how it goes. Then I have Mr. Obina here, Dr. Obina, actually. People like to put that doctor, but he doesn't really care. Because whether we put the doctor or not, he's still a doctor. But we'll still call him Dr. Obina, okay? Because you know he read very hard for it. So let's call him Dr. Obina. Dr. Obina is here, and you're going to listen to his own point of view about this salient topic today. Enjoy. And my name is Princess, okay? Before, uh, yeah, you see, I forgot to tell you about myself. My name is Princess and I'm your, your sister and your friend. Dr. Obina, what's your, what's your idea about the 21st century marriage? What, 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 do you, what, what comes to mind when you think about the marriage that we have nowadays? Okay. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, generally speaking, I would say that it's, it's unfortunate, but because we're talking about the situation in the church, isn't it? Yes. It's unfortunate that there is a little difference from what we see in church and what we see in the world. The yeah. only difference is maybe the people in church attend church, you understand? They belong to one group or one denomination or one interdenominational meeting. Mm -hmm. At the root of it, they are the same. I know it's weird to say, but let me, let me give examples. These days, when you discuss with people, even married people in the church, the points they bring out are the same points in the world. They rarely, you rarely see someone in church discuss these things and quote Bible and say, this is my conviction based on this, based on this situation. Rather, they would say, oh, this pastor or this leader did it this way. One example, even in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay. You see? But many of us, we've missed the plot. We follow men. 
not necessarily asking the follow-up question, are they actually following Christ? Okay. And that is why when we look at the data or statistics, problems or marital problems, it's almost the same rate or percentage, both in the church and outside. Now, the question is why? You know, we can give a different reason. Some people might say, oh, it's economic situations or financial situations. Some might say just different reasons. But even if those reasons are valid, the question is, then what is the difference if you're a Christian in marriage and if you're an unbeliever in marriage? You see, if we give that those reasons, it defies our confession or profession as Christian. So that's just the, back, the way I see the situation both currently and how will I put it historically? I'll hand over to Mr. David. Okay, Mr. David, go ahead. Bible-based conviction. What are Bible, like what's the conviction? What, what is it? How do you understand this? So, um, first of all, I'm so happy to be here again. I took a break last week. Uh, so some of you probably you expected us to come. And uh, well, we are back today, and today we're going to be real again, but we want to focus a bit more on biblical points regarding marriage. So, looking at uh, the historical background of marriage, I mean, compared to the modern age marriage, for me, um, even if we're looking at through the lens of the church, uh, for me, for a while, I've seen right now about like the marriage scene is very, very, very contractual based, very conditional. And um, that is something that is uh, happening. And uh, I'm just looking forward to us speaking more about some of these points before I can delve into more about my thoughts on it. Okay. Based on this, but, um, okay, go but ahead. The key, but the key thing I see right now is in contrast to historically, like let's say our grandfather's time or our parents' time, the marriage we have right now between believers is very, very contractual. Based, even though it is, it is, even though people marrying the church it's, it's still if you dig down to the bare bones of marriage you just realize that man this thing is very very conditional based and i'm going to break it down a bit later. <laughs> okay i know some, somebody might be out there thinking what, what are you talking about so what's the concept of headship now Let's go. Let's go about. Let's talk about headship. What's the concept? What's the concept of headship? I mean, literally, the, the term headship is the person is the head, the person is the leader, the person is the um, the one person is the leader. And somebody, you know, we rightly say that there are no two. You can never have, have two captains in a boat, right? And so, does it mean that men in the twenty first century are losing their position of headship? or they're not allowed to exercise their headship or they're not allowed to occupy or... Uh, can, I, can I say? Yeah, go ahead. So for me, um, I don't think... We are not speaking on behalf of all men, and neither are we saying that all men act in a certain way, but I would say some... Christian believing men are uh, kind of like becoming, um, I don't want to use strong words, but I just have to say, like a lot of men are becoming very irresponsible, let's say, right? And that is the reason why things are changing. And that is the reason, one part of the reason why they are losing their leadership. Now, why am I saying that? For example, Christ, right? Christ, as the leader of the church, took up the responsibility um, to 
come to this world to save everyone apart from our sin. And he, if you look through his life, he went through a lot of um, pain and tribulations, right? Temptations and all of that. But through it all, he, he left his, um, his godship and took up his mantle. And that is a very, very big responsibility. Now, if we are to akin that to a, a regular man, uh, I mean, there are very, very clear uh, instructions about what a man, a husband, should do in the Bible. And there are very, very clear instructions as to what a woman should do. Now, because of society norm or society conformity, a lot of believers tend to now blur the lines between what is men's responsibility or what is women's responsibility and all of that. So I think, and because of that um, modern, modern thinking or modernization or conformity to what's happening, a lot of our Christian believing men are now sort of giving excuses for things that they are supposed to be responsible for, right? And now we see our sisters now trying to take up the role of, of instead of supporting, now they're doing leadership uh, responsibilities. And in turn, obviously, it's going to affect your leadership in the, uh, in the marriage. And also, and that is just creating problems for the entire um, structure of marriage. Generally, I'm speaking generally. I'm not saying everything is the way uh, it's one way. There's no one way, right? So okay. that's why I, I feel like is the reason why the leadership um, in men. Okay. Now, if we look at it in light of, I don't know, Robin, you have something to say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So if we look at it in light of Jeremiah chapter 35, so many people would have read this passage and some other people might not have read it, but we see a very important uh, story of those children of Rechabite where uh, the, the prophet went to them. It was prophet Jeremiah. He went to them and he, he said before them why, right? Their dad had died many, many years before. But these children or these descendants refused to take wine. The Bible says that God said he knows Abraham, that Abraham will command his children after him. Right, so now this Rechabite's father, or like he's their let's call him their father, many years after, had given them an instruction that was passed down from one generation to another. So, what is it about this man that will make him that gave him this authority? He, I see a man that had a certain authority in his family, or a man that had. I mean, he was, he was gone, but still his children continued in his path. They continued in what he had taught them. So there must have been some kind of influence about his life. The way he lived his life was one worthy to be emulated. Many years after he was gone, he had died and gone, but his children remembered that our father said, we cannot drink wine. So the life of this man is really commendable. They obeyed the voice of their father, Jonadab, many, many years after. What is it about him? And if you compare that to the children that we have now, then you have homes where um, there's a father and there's a mother and there are children and you see a lot of children going wayward and they are Christians. And, you know, how does that affect or how does that relate to the kind of headship that is manifested by Christian men today. If you look at that in line with this story in Jeremiah chapter 35, Robina, what do you what do you want to say? Uh, thank you. 
what I would say, I would just make it quick and brief so that people can get the points. Yes. The first point is this. There's always a cycle in life. Let's call it in, in church life. The first cycle is revelation. Revelation means, let's say, things have been, the church was good before, but it got corrupted. So there will be like a new, a re-revelation of what the church ought to be. When that re-revelation comes, a new group of people will break out from that old tradition to maintain the real tradition. That new tradition people will be fervent, you know, serving the Lord. But with time, they will degenerate. At this stage, that is what is happening in Israel. Because if we look at, it all boils down to leadership, headship. They are father, and you give it, you also give the example of Abraham. These mm-hmm. men, how like it, Apostle Paul say, I know whom I believe, and I'm persuaded. These men were men of persuasion. They did not go into marriage just because, oh, I want to marry, I'm of age, or my parents need grandchildren. They did not travel or relocate because there was a better job opportunity. No, they were men of conviction that moved with purpose. And God gave them promises. Some of them did not live to see the full, complete fulfillment of those promises. But they left it as an inheritance to their children. These are the men we are talking about. And often these men, when you look at their wives, often in scripture, there's not much written about their wives. The little that will be written about their wives will be deep. For example, the Bible in the New Testament said, Sarah called her husband Lord. And God counted it unto her as a good thing. I mean, think about that. So these people, starting from the head to the woman or the the wife, they were pursuing a goal, which is God-centered. It's not this discussion we normally hear in Christian circles. Oh, the man must make an amount of dollars. Or, oh, I need a washing machine. You know, some flimsy stuff that, even if they give you all those things, it's not going to... You are not, it's not going to make you're not going to leave any impact, whether in your generation or in the next. That's the way I see this thing. Starting both from the headship level to the companionship level, because the thing is, let, look at the situation we're having. Um, your bro, uh, bro David was making reference to it. marriage, usually has many components. One part usually is the contract, another part is the covenant. What he was referring to was that these days, we just focus on the contract part. If you don't abide by this contract, you break it. The contract is null and void. We forget the covenant part, which is the foundation. The covenant part means we're already in a covenant. It can't be broken. If you like, break the contract part. Because, you see, all these things are, are, are interrelated to the decay we see in, we see in, in church today. We no longer Let's have... focus on family and not church. No, no, it's tied. Because remember at the beginning, what did I say? People, instead of going to the Bible and sticking with what God says, they would rather be looking towards maybe one spiritual leader or one... Okay. So now person. let's focus more on not a spiritual leader, not a church, but what is the concept? What is the ideal convictions because now we're looking at in life with the Bible. When we didn't, we're not mentioning anything about church right some now. Of, some, of, some of those convictions. Let's use this um, Jeremiah 35 as an example. Yes. Drink, drinking wine is not a sin. Hmm? Drinking wine is not a sin. The, the, the other scriptures tied to that Jeremiah 35 is First Corinthians 6. Drinking or, wine, you mean alcohol? Yes. If you look at it carefully all through the Bible, it's not a sin. Why is it not? Okay. Go and read it again. Go and read it again. The only this thing is, that is... This is getting interesting. No, the only thing that is sin... They will come for you. No, 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 no. They will get not, your head. I'm a teetotaler. I'm, you understand? It's one thing to have your own conviction. My conviction is I abstain from alcohol. Okay. But oh, we, we must not confuse our conviction with what is clear in the Bible. I'm using this example in this Jeremiah 35. Mm-hmm. Drinking wine is not a sin. That was why, even though Jeremiah brought them into the, I think it was the temple, yeah. and gave them wine to drink, they knew it was not a sin. But because their their father, their ancestor already told them, for you people, 
you should not. The thing that is a sin is drunkenness. But of course, you can't be drunk if you don't drink. You see the, the tie. So if, you're, if, you, if your conviction is, I'm not even going to drink, it is your conviction. You see the point. If someone, if someone else said, no, I would drink, but I know my limit, good for the person. If the person gets drunk, let him go and settle with God. Now, you see, you see where the slippery slope starts because yeah. drinking is not a sin. Mm-hmm. Conviction. People throw away conviction and say, ah, I will drink. They keep getting drunk. Before long, they will say it does not matter. This is where the conviction aspect ties it. Now, how does it tie into marriage? How it ties into marriage is this. Headship. You were mentioning headship. As the man. Let's, let's do practical. As the man. You want to marry a lady. You propose, Abby. Yeah. During the courtship period, that is when you will tell her your vision, huh? your mm-hmm. conviction and vision. Yeah. This is where things begin to go south. To start with, most men, they don't have any vision in this area. They might have vision to make a million dollars. You see? But that's their vision. They don't have conviction in this area. And good enough, the ladies, that's what they want these days. They just want a million dollars. So that's where the thing goes down here. But let's say the man had the vision of just $100. He doesn't care about his spiritual life or his children. If the woman is a godly woman, the woman will tell the man, thank you very much. I'm not interested. You see, the, you see it. The problem is it's from both sides. It starts with the, the male side. Mm-hmm. The female side, the female side, they, they don't, the, the, the pushback they give is not that pushback. The pushback they give is focused on worldly and material things. Now, I'm not saying, oh, go and become so far ahead. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if we say we are Christians, there's a foundation, isn't it? That's all I'm saying. So that's the, that's the much I will say at this stage. Let me hand it over to Mr. David. Okay, Mr. David, go for it. So <clears throat> you touched on a very interesting part. Although I would have loved to go into it, but I don't want to bring the ladies side of it <laughs> into it uh, because we are focusing on it. Today. So um, for me, I think a very, very important quality a lot of our men do this lack is um, the ability to serve. Like, let's look at much chapter 20 verse 26. It says, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader must be a servant. This is Jesus Christ saying that, right? Um, Jesus Christ is basically the head of the church. If he is found serving the disciple, and since we are men, we are following the pattern of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to look at leadership as a way of servitude. The way Jesus Christ looked at it. It doesn't mean that you're a servant, but it just means that you understand that your leadership is not, um, it's not, uh, how would I say, it's not a, a position where you are oppressing your wife, per se. So let me make it a bit, let me bring it more and make it more practical. Now, say, for example, you, you are coming back from work, and just because you, you work so hard and the wife is a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife, and just because you feel like you're the person that has gone out to do, to bring in the money, you don't really value the woman's side of things in terms of the part she's playing in the role of the relationship. You come home, you just bring your things everywhere, and you expect her to just arrange it for you all the time. And you order her around, where is my food? Uh, where is my water for, for shower and all that? Even though you don't need to ask for those things for a virtuous woman to do those things. But the way you approach your wife, it really shows if you have a Christ-like attitude in terms of your leadership uh, quality as a man, right? 
And I, I feel like a lot of times also, the reason why some of these men behave like that is because we as male, we've noticed that a lot of we, we, our sisters is with a very, very materialistic reason, right? And therefore, if a man, if a brother has been able to do well for himself, start to feel like, oh, since I've been able to get to that level which you really want to be, uh, right with me and uh, out of all his sisters, I, I decided to, <laughs> to um, agree or to propose to you. Therefore, because of that, um, whatever I do or whatever I say is like the gospel for, 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 for everything, right? And take, for example, there are, some, there are a lot of cases where it's even in the extreme angles. It's, it's, it's where the brother now becomes um, very singular in his termination, right? Uh, you, are, you are about to plan something serious. For example, you are about to relocate to a place. You know, even discuss with the sister properly before uh, finalizing on that decision. You just come and announce, oh, this is what we're doing, and that's it, no discussion. And it's, it's, to me, that's not true leadership quality, right? Mm -hmm. And um, well, at the end of the day, we realize that such men or such brothers that act in that way, they, a lot of times they even become abusive, I would say, right? And they become reckless in instances. So yeah, I'll see you for all the other. Yeah, Brahmin, I'll go for it. Just, uh, it is just a response to what uh, Brother David was saying. So from what Brother David is saying, you see, if we, if we put it back to the topic, biblical conviction, what most likely happened was the sister, he already said it, the sister was materialistic to start with, even in the courtship. So all those signs, she ignored it and went into it. So it boils down to the beginning part of the whole thing, conviction on both sides. The way I see it is that at times people are in marriages that fit them. Do you understand what I mean? Even if it's negative or positive, it fit them because some of those signs were there. Where I'm saying this thing is practical. I know, in fact, I know of a situation where on the day of the um, traditional wedding, the woman was already crying. Do you understand what I mean? Why is she crying? I, let me learn. The marriage did not even last one year. They returned bright price. And this is so-called godly sister or Christian sister. Why I'm saying this thing is, when, I'm, when we're talking about biblical conviction, it's not only on the male side, it's on both sides. So if the male has the conviction and comes into courtship, if the woman is not buying into it, he should step out. If the man comes into courtship without conviction, the woman, which is God, should detect it and refuse to understand going forward. Because there are many issues we are facing today in church that should have been nipped in the board, meaning even at courtship level. But because both parties were like, oh, let's go, I feel this way, I feel that way. When problems start, that's when they will start pointing fingers. Oh, the men don't know what they're doing or the women don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That is the truth because uh, we are witnesses. Good, good girls, eh? when they see nice guys that should be good for them, sadly, even in church, they reject them. On the reverse, the men are, <laughs> are chasing after, you understand, or serious ladies. Even in church, it should not be so. But that is what we have. Back to the conviction stuff. Because if we look, the, what is common between our scripture passages today is that there are some things that are outrightly not sin. They are not sin. But if we are to live our lives of conviction and walk with God and fulfill his plan for us, there are some things that are valid, but we can't do it. Yeah. We can't. Apostle Paul said it in First uh, Corinthians 6, 12 and 10. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are edifying. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but I will not bring myself under the 
you know, bondage of any of them. Yeah. For example, let's say the man has a calling to be a music minister. If that man is not careful during the courtship, after the marriage, his music ministry will die. You see the problem? It means that the man was not even serious to start with. On the flip side, if the woman is a music minister, if truly God has called her to be a music minister, in the courtship, the man will look at it and say, yes, I can see that you are called to this. And even if he has, the music ministry has to be modified after she gets married, but she will fulfill that calling. The sad part is many, many of us today in church, we do not fulfill any calling. We just live and that's it. There's no, some of us have parents or grandparents that if we look back, we can still remember some things they told us. You know, they will say, you are my son or you are my daughter. You can't do this. The thing they are telling us not to do, it's not evil, it's not sinful. They just say, because you are my son or because you are my daughter, you can't do this. Those are the kind of things we are talking about, biblical conviction. At times, it will be you yourself. God convicted you of something, either it might be dressing, it might be the way you spend your money. It might be, you know, some people, it might be how they use their home. They open their home to like strangers, visitors, fellow. It could be anything, but there's conviction even before going into that relationship. Even the children, when the children are born and they are growing up, they will imbibe it. They don't need to be taught. They will, they will see it lived out. Yeah. 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 So what I get from this is that if, if you go into marriage without any iota of conviction, then you practically are going to be lost. So you should have your own convictions, things that you hold on to, things that you stand on. They could, they may not be sinful, but they're just your values. So is that is that what? So when, when, when we are talking about conviction, with a specific biblical conviction, it's not idiosyncrasy or personality trait. We mean, you understand? <laughs> biblical. Well, define what is endocrisis, uh, endocrisis, endo, say it. Idiosyncrasy. <laughs> Idiosyncrasy and personality traits. For example, I will give myself, let me out myself. I'm very time conscious. Yes. For example, if a meeting is meant to start by nine, I will come there by 8.30. That's me. Yes. If, someone else, if someone else comes by 8.59, it's not my business. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yes. But if the person comes like 9, 10, it will piss me off. But because I'm a Christian, I will forgive the person. I won't tell the person anything, but we will move on. <laughs> that is my own idiosyncrasy. But now, biblical conviction, I'll give an example. One, I believe in a certain way of dressing. Okay. Now, the people that do not abide by that, I'm not going to judge them and say, oh, you are going to hell. On the last day, they and Jesus Christ will settle it. That's the way I see that one. But at least that's my own biblical conviction. Okay. You understand? I can't be wearing one kind of clothes and you're also wearing it. No, no. We're different. <laughs> wear your own. I will wear my own. So that's that's like, that's <laughs> example. Yeah. That's, that calls for a lot of argument. But anyways... So dressing and appearance. No, no, no. I'm not arguing with anybody. I already said, if you want anything you want to do, you can do it. I'm not judging. I will leave you. I'm not judging you. You see what I mean? But that person cannot be your own wife. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, David, you have to add something. Exactly. So even myself, I mean, I have personal uh, convictions. For example, he said about time. Right. For me, fitness is important. If you are not fit, that's my personal conviction. Me and you cannot. Right? <laughs> okay. Fitness. Fitness. I don't want somebody that will now make me unfit, right? Because of their own way, lifestyle. Not eating healthy. Not eating healthy. Not exercising. Not, not taking care of what their. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
their sleep levels and all of those things, right? That is my personal conviction. Now, my public conviction that uh, you could take it or leave it <laughs> is, uh, should I say, no, I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, I don't want to piss some people off. Okay. <laughs> so they will say that brother, that brother, that brother will be it. I won't listen to him. <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> That's what some people say. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think that this is, um, we're kind of wrapping off, but the second passage of the Bible was saying that um, not, all, not all things are expedient, not all things are lawful, but all things are expedient. Is that how you put it? Let me get the passage. Oh, all things are lawful, but not all things uh, are expedient. expedient. I think I have the passage. All uh, things let, are lawful. Let me, let me read it for you. I think all it's from Corinthians 6.12. Six, twelve. Six, twelve. All, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Then um, 10.23 is a complement to that. It says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Hmm. So two, two things, expediency, edification, edification. Those are the two, two key. And lawfulness. Um, no, no, no. They might be lawful, but they might not be expedient. They might be lawful, but they might not be edifying. edifying. They might also be lawful, but they might bring you under bondage, like bring you under their power. Hmm. So that's food for thought. So what are the things will we see in our society that is lawful but not expedient? Money. <laughs> so we're getting into the meat of this, this, this talk now. So money is lawful but it's not expedient. In other words, you're saying that when you say expedient, expedient means maybe not so, not so important. In, 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 the, in the Gospels, the Lord Jesus Christ addressed it, meaning even First Timothy 6, money is good. Money answers all things. But yeah. it says the love of money. The root the of money. So it means that, let me, let me say it in everyday terms, you have to hold money loosely. If, so, God has, if God has blessed you with money, see it as if you are a steward of that money. You see the point? You are a steward mm. of the money you are going to give account. So it's going to affect how you spend it. But if you see the money, oh, it's mine. That's a different issue. Or how you behave because of what you have. Yes. Okay, so that's, I mean, mo most of you have already said that money, ladies are the ones that are more interested in, 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 in a man that has money. But now th things are shifting, though. Men are wanting women that have money, too. Uh, no, 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 that is wrong. No, 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 no. <laughs> then... It's becoming a norm, though. No, no, no. Even if it's a norm. You see, these things have existed throughout history. This, I was reading the other day. Uh, our audience might know about Matthew Henry's Bible commentary. Yes. His father, his father, actually his mother, his father is, was a preacher, but his mother came from a rich family. But his father was a preacher. I want you to think about that. His, his mother came with inheritance, you understand? You know, yes. if you, you, but if you look at, you wouldn't know until you go and read about the, the biography. Yes. Mm -hmm. But today, if the woman has money, CNN, BBC, Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, CBC, everybody will know. You see the difference? What is difference? that supposed to mean? Really? Oh, no. But, yeah, but, 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 but see, but we'll be not, the other side of that story is, the guy himself, he obviously has something that is very, very valuable to that family. Yeah. If, if not. Or to the lady. Know. Maybe no, no, not no, to no. the family. But no, to no, the no, lady. no. Why, why, why I said it that way was that the man could have married any other. If, what I mean is that, of course, the man would propose, isn't it? Yes. But if it was in these our days, the woman would not have accepted you see the point well that's why we talked about why women don't want to marry preachers or pastors you, right you see the, the, point. Man, the man the man with most men that are not to a certain standard are practically invisible to yes, sir. sister they don't exist like 
it is how do I explain it? It's like air. You you see, you cannot see air. That's how they are to to to, to most systems. Not all right? systems. Some. I I didn't say all. I said most in this age that we are in. They are invisible. But once you have a Range Rover or you have something that is visibly attractive to a woman, oh my God, all of them is civil of God. Why? Women don't see will of God now. It's you that Why? is going to propose to them. No. They see will of God now. What exactly. are you talking about? Sister Princess, don't play, don't play ah. dumb now. These days they are seeing see will of God. And they will greet you specially. Hmm? The brother that don't ride in a nice car, they don't, they will treat you like as if you don't even, you're not something. So another thing I, I also want to mention is it's not just money that attracts this is a status. What okay. I mean by status, um, especially somebody in a very high position in church, for example. That's why you see a lot of uh, adultery and temptation happening with pastors. Because of position, power. power, 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 power. They're attracted to money and power, right? About handsomeness, looks. They don't that that's just nonsense talk. <laughs> they don't they, they is 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 down the list. There is a list, you know. Women have a very long laundry of lists. You must first you must be this, you must be this, you must be this. They will tell you, see, let me use the quote language I just use. Okay, I want a brother that is God fearing. They, they will use that one as a blanket to cover themselves. <laughs> then <laughs> second criteria. They will tell you, I want a brother that is hardworking. Hmm? Hardworking. What does that hardworking mean? That they can see you. They can see you are visible. Because you are working you're hard. And so this is the if result not, of hard work. Of course, if the result is not showing for you are not hardworking. You are not hardworking. <laughs> okay. Okay. So after that, they will tell you they want a brother that is uh, responsible. You know, they want a brother that is caring. They want a brother that is uh, down to earth. Then this goes on. Then they will now tell you uh, you must be taking certain ways. Sometimes they tell you it's tall. Sometimes they tell you it's light. Sometimes they tell you you want a dark skin guy. Depends. That's when they start changing. But if you ask, do, do this interview, go to church tomorrow. Eh? Take five sisters, ask them, tell me your criteria for is it a brother. Just listen to it, whether it will be so different from what I just said. Bro, even, am I wrong? No, Sister Princess, I've seen the it's, I've seen the drama in her house now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, but the conversation that would that, that would that happen was not about well, I don't think I, I don't think no, we should get into no, it. Yeah, yeah. But let me tell you, let me tell you the crux of the conversation. The crux of the conversation is the lady felt that she would not be carried on baby napkin. Do you understand what I mean? She will not be carried on baby napkin. Now let me ask you this question. A lady about to go into marriage, is that the right mindset? Marriage is like a war, a battle. And you are going in with the mentality of, oh, you want to be carried on baby napkin. When baby now comes, where will we put the baby? Well, you see the point? It's not wrong for a woman to want to be tendered, you know, carried on baby napkin. That means cared for, isn't it? That is not what I mean. Let me give you a practical example because this thing has played out even in this our city, even in this our fellowship. Mm. Listen to story. And he doesn't, it's not romantic enough. He doesn't take me to the movies often. Before long, she's already pregnant with baby. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying this is, you know, something, sometimes I say some things, people say, oh, this guy is just talking. I'm telling you things that I've seen. That's happened. People, you know, in olden days, what how how do women go about this? Is it's either their father or uncle or older brother will you know you understand help them, but these days they are on their own and they are chosen wrong. 
I know someone will say, oh, is that not her choice? Yes. Like you said, women want to be pampered, and that is where they, they, they fall into the ditch. A man, a man is a smart guy. He can, you understand, sell you a dream. <laughs> Once you buy that dream and the dream is not real, you're already in the pit. That is the problem. Somebody said it was, it, it became like film trick. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. nice. It was so loving. It was so tender. It was so attentive. And then after the marriage, she became violent and became yeah, do, aggressive. Do you, know, do you know what I call them? to people. hit her at home. Do you know so, what I call those men? I call them smooth operators. So now, if you want to give an advice to a woman, now we're, we're still going to come back to the men, but if you want to give an advice to a woman and she's looking, since nowadays the fathers don't do the choosing and the, do, the girl is the one doing the choosing, the advice that you would give for a woman to look for is, first of all, his conviction, his relationship with God, right? So how do you now know that um, his conviction is not just, he's not just smooth talking it? One way is if, if, you, if the lady is with that person in the same locality, meaning they have multiple interactions within the week, either in school or in church or at workplace, you can observe, isn't it? Yeah. After this, you know, let's say, you know, like potluck, this uh, food garden. When you come together to eat, yeah. When you come together, People discuss and talk. So you listen to this person. The person will keep yapping. If the person has yapped to you for like one month and it is the same yap, now watch the person. Is that yap corresponding to the way the person is moving? If it is corresponding, then okay. <clears throat> then the, the lady can say, it looks as if this person really believes this thing he's saying. That's mm -hmm. one way to. Another way could be if you have a, how will I put it? An, older or wiser counselor it could be a, a female or a male that knows both of you you can ask the person some question the person will tell you you understand what it is that's in the area of the biblical conviction side yeah and then after that other things can come into play for example the man's vision because at times this thing we're talking about vision if it is a true vision you know, I've take, um, currently I've been taking some time to read about and listen to these men, some of them unbelievers that have really made impact in their generation. Yeah. Many of them went through trials and tribulation. It was as if it's like this common theme to every one of them. It's either they, 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 they got success after five years and the success went like they went bust. The success went away. They were even in debt. The next phase of their life began. The next 10 years, they now hit it and understood their mistake. So if someone is telling you the vision, you need to weigh the vision, mm -hmm. pray about it and understand, is this vision realistic to start with? Even if it doesn't look realistic to you, you know, this, this thing we're talking about spirituality, we should practice it. We should pray. If someone, if the man is telling you, oh, I'm, I want to do this, I want to do that, you should pray. God is not wicked. You will know if this person is just trying to sell you a drink or not. You will know. You will see some signs there. That's what, that's what I would say. And uh, the, the, the truth is, you cannot technically, you cannot really know everything from especially a prayer, right? But I think the mistake most sisters like to make is they present themselves in a certain way that the brother will be playing according to your presentation. For example, you are saying, oh, me, I only go to this type of places. So I only um, like to go on uh, dates in this area or that area. For me, I only buy this kind of clothes. So I only buy this kind of bag. So once the guy is hearing that from me, obviously, he just knows that this one is very, very much related. So let's play this game according to the, the rules of this woman's uh, point of view. Right? And at the end of the day, men always adapt to women. Right? If you look at history, eh? now we are, we are looking at feminism, 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 feminism. Men are still adapting and women are losing that game. They don't, whether they realize it or not, they think being independent is to your advantage. No, it's to your greatest advantage. And so how, 
Okay, keep going. Because, because at the end of the day, eh, men are very perfectly okay to be the world, right? They can have companionship, especially when a man, especially for the feminist women that are looking for a materialistic type of marriage. You know, what, what I mean by feminist woman is a woman that is not even following Bible standards. You don't want to be submissive to your husband in the first place. So if you don't want to be submissive to your husband in the first place, you are, you are definitely a feminist, right? And if you're a feminist, that means you're looking for a caliber of man, right? And that man that you're looking for, that caliber of man that you're looking for, eh, that man, you are going to be in serious competition to get that man. Because there are so many of you in line for that man. And there are very few of that type of man available. A good man, a man that is boxed up, a man that is handsome, a man that is tall. Ah, ah, look at criteria. Right? So if you are playing that game, you are losing it. You are going to lose. The man will win all year long. Okay? Now, the other thing is, I just want to advise the sisters I want to get a good man. If you want to get a good man, whenever you're talking to a man, never you talk about materialistic things. Only talk about what are your dreams, where are you going, what is important to you. You want to know, you want to calibrate where his head is, right? If, it, if he's not thinking, if he doesn't have a vision for his life, he's not thinking, okay, this is how I want my family to be, okay? Don't even force it out of his mouth. Don't let it, don't, the moment you start asking him the question in such a way that you want him to say those things, of course, he's going to pick up on that and start giving you those stories. So, like, oh, this is this is how I want my, my house to be like this, you know, I'm going to do it like this and then do it like this. My children are going to go to the best schools, you know, don't worry, my sister, I just, you know, you, my wife is going to have a very good life. All is all a script that is playing for you because he realized that this is the type of viewer you are to him, right? And he's going to play that movie for you so that you can buy the ticket. But if you are the type of person like, okay, bro, you see, both of us, we're not getting any younger. And uh, you, you see, marriage is a good thing. And I believe in the biblical principle of marriage, where man must be um, the head of the home. I must be submissive to the, to the, to the leadership of my husband. When, once you start saying those things, you start thinking, hmm. even if he was a player before, you start thinking, hmm. okay. this one is different. <laughs> this one is different. Maybe, maybe I have found my true, you know, woman, you know? And when you start saying those things, it's more, he will start losing those elements of playing games with you, right? Because when you truly, truly be yourself in the way God, the Bible describes it, submissiveness, leadershipness, everybody is taking their role correctly. You see that everything just start balancing out because what's the number one thing that a man requires or look for in, in, in the system? He wants respect, right? And if he sees that you are going to be the type of person that is going to give him that leadership role, obviously, then you start seeing like some things that you never saw before, right? And also if you open the conversation to us like, talking about his core principles, right? His core biblical um, standards, right? And that's how you know that, okay, we are building something really, really, really solid. Rather than all these stupid, stupid, I'm sorry to use this word, but a lot of conversations that happens in, 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 in courtship is very, very materialistic and it doesn't really help a lot of sisters, right? They are too focused on things that, like brother uh, uh, Obina. Obinas described earlier, that in the life of a man is in phases. Sometimes he wins, sometimes he lose. 
And you have, if you are too focused on the material side of things, what if he loses? Hmm. What if he loses? Because, and even when he loses, for example, if you are, if, if you are married to a man for the right reason, if he loses, you have the power and the ability to make him shine again. Because your moral boast, you saying the right things, you will push him into action. Right? Rather than him thinking in his head, God, I'm losing right now. My, my wife doesn't have my back. Obviously, he's not going to think right. You know, and that is the circle that currently we are, we are facing. Like a lot of marriages fall apart. Christian marriages, good ones, fall apart because both parties are not on the same wavelength. Both parties are not truly, truly following the biblical principle of what marriage should be, the foundations. Most of our, a lot of, uh, a lot of our brothers that are not really biblical in their thinking throughout marriage, they, they, they want to be shedding their responsibilities to the system. Right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's looking for equal, equal. There is no such thing as equal. There is leadership and there is Support, support role. The Bible says that I will be told, God said to Adam, I will give you and help me help meet. Meaning that Adam, you need to be doing something first. Right? Before I can send Eve your way. But most guys these days, they want Eve to be doing something too. Ah, which one is that's not the original structure how it goes. Hey. Adam, he busy tending the garden. Eve is going to come to, <laughs> to support you. <laughs> <I'll be there. laughs> okay. uh, Thank you. This, this, this is just to buttress what Mr. David is saying. Remember when Sister Princess, when I said something that, oh, no, no. When Sister Princess said, oh, the lady should be working, I said no. Whether she works or she doesn't work, whether she makes money or she doesn't make money, that is support. You see the point? That's what, uh, really what? That's what Brother David was trying to say. But because we've so, not that we've twisted it, we have bought into the, the box. The, the, we have bought into the script the world has set for us. We've got our mind twisted. Yes. There's, that, there's that curious scripture, Ephesians 4.23, where it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, as a Christian, if you are not careful, you will be living as like an unbeliever with the title yes. of a Christian. Yes. That is Let's what give it, examples in the Bible. Yeah. Right. Abraham. Abraham was not idle. Jacob wasn't idle. Isaac wasn't idle. Right? I, I, I don't know any scripture in the Bible. Even Paul right? the apostle wasn't idle. Paul the apostle was not idle. Right? So, I don't see the excuse of a brother to now say that he's waiting for sister to become active before he now take her as a help. That's not a help to me. To me, it's not a help. Me. It's not a help. Me. If a lot of brothers like to put forward that they want me and that she will build the house, she will do this, she will do that, she will do this, she will do that. Okay. Yeah, but the but the but the proverbs that one woman, the husband was already at the gate. Isn't it? The gate, no, it's, no, it's at the gate that leaders meet. So you understand, the, the husband was already a leader. <laughs> so, but it, for the husband to be a leader, he must have done a lot of things right. Yeah. So I don't understand the argument about after to one woman. A lot of brothers in this group are quoting that passage and they're using to support the argument that mm-hmm. brothers. Uh, should always look for a sister that is working. Okay, if you've got a sister that is working, it's a bonus for you. But it is not a criteria. All you need is, is a sister that can build a home. A home, what is a home? A home is bigger than just money. There is mental health, there's physical health, there's environmental health, all those things. 
I'm sorry, there are some sisters, they don't know basic things about managing a home. So many of them, very shocking. And just, I think to me, that's what the Bible is talking about. You should find a helpmate that can build a home. Not somewhere that now you now start teaching. I'm not going through this. <laughs> well, uh, you guys have made very, very, very interesting um, points. And I, I don't disagree with the place of headship and helpmate. Okay, but it's when people now go off and they start saying that in the world of nowadays there is need, the bills are a lot, so you have to bring bring your contribution. It's 50-50, you know, and then the woman, the women now take up their own, you know, <laughs> whatever and start saying, okay, in that case, and then you too, you have to help me. 50 50, you have to cook now and everything. But now you see that nowadays, many women um, are very professional. They go to work like their husbands, they're working full time. They feel that, okay, I went to school, I'm educated, I'm smart, I'm a medical doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a, I'm a, a scientist, I'm an aeronautic, whatever, you know. And I can invent, I can, I'm an entrepreneur, I can build something, I can get into some places that maybe as a man, you're not going to, you're not able to get to. So the world wants to pave some ways for women just so that to create that egalitarian, you know, atmosphere. And so it's not a problem for a woman to even have a very good job, but that does not take away the leadership of the husband, okay? And leadership does not have to do with how much money you earn or how much popular you are. We know a very, very popular woman, Kamala Harris, who is the vice president of, of the United States. We have many women presidents around. We have uh, uh, the Nigerian woman, Okonjo Iweala, who is also doing well. We don't hear so much about her husband. I think he's a medical doctor or something like that. And doesn't mean, doesn't take his place from being the head of her home. He doesn't take away his place. He doesn't feel threatened by the advancement or the popularity or the, or the exposure of his wife, because he already knows his place in their marriage and in their home. So first of all, a man needs to know his own place. Once, once you, are, you know your place and you, are, you, you understand the concept of your position as the head of that marriage, the advancement of your wife is your joy whether she's advancing, whether she's moving forward, whether she's making strides. She's making those strides carrying your name, right? So it's like we're a team here. This, this team member is just showing forth, knows how to speak. So she's a speaker. Is good in finance. So, and the world needs her, the World Bank, and then she's there. You are not resenting her. And whatever you're going to do to, of course, those kind of women are very busy. So, but if you work as a team together, you make the home work such that even when she's not around, you are still there holding the home front together with the help of, I mean, cleaners. You can get cleaners, right? They don't live with you and come and clean your house and go and you guys pay for it. You can get food made in bulk. You, you, you just have to make it work. And it cannot work if you have resentment. It cannot work if you are feeling competitive. It cannot work if you are feeling like this is now a, a, a battle of, you know, it's not, a, it's not a tussle. Marriage is not supposed to be a tussle. You as a man, you know your place as a leader and you already know that leadership, they say the heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? Yeah. You know that if I can wear this crown of leadership and let it sit correctly on my head, no matter how vast or knowledgeable my wife is, she will still look up to me and she will still come to me for advice. So first of all, men need to understand their position as leaders. What is my position as the head of this family? What does God expect me to do as the head of this family? What is the biblical expectation for me in this family as the head of this family? Yes, but I'm going to go for it. Yeah, so what I wanted to say as we're saying that is to clarify some things for the both the, the women and the men that are listening or watching. This is where the problem starts, like we mentioned earlier. It starts even before the marriage. Mm. Because let, like you're saying, let's say the woman has this conviction, oh, I'm going to be a medical doctor. Yeah. 
Or I am a medical doctor. Or I'm already a medical doctor, but before the marriage. This is the problem. Women, shut up. You know, statistically, women talk more than men. But in this thing, eh, when you people in courtship, shut up, listen. That is when you should listen more as a woman. Because since men talk less, you need to allow him to, you know, confess. <laughs> you, you need to know what is really, you understand, in the depth of his soul. Mm. You, you, will not, you need to weigh it. Because the problem is, if the man just says superficially, yes, you can be a doctor, down the road, there will be a problem. Because as a woman, biblically, you should fit into his plan, the man's plan. Like God David was saying, the man was made first and given instructions. So if you say you want to submit to him, you better be sure that you can fit into his program. If what you, if your conviction and your vision that God has given you cannot fit into his program, tell him, bro, thank you, you're a good guy, but no. You see, all these things, we will solve it from the, if we did not even get into it in the beginning. The same thing for the man. If you have a vision and you notice that the sister is like, ah, I'm not in, call it off. Even if you have to stay single for life, call it off. Because all these things we are, <clears throat> all these things we are talking about is, is already problem. But we can already have avoided the problem if we stick to the biblical-based convictions. The Bible says, Amos 3.3, 3, can two work together except they be agreed? If you can't even agree at the get-go, forget it. You will save yourself heartache and heartbreak. That's it. Good. Mr. David, go for it. Yeah, and also I wanted to add the, the last part. I said a lot of brothers um, tend to have problems because, first of all, you are not being responsible enough in tending the garden. Now, you are going after a sister that has a different idea of the garden. Obviously, it will not work because you are promising her heaven and earth. And the problem is, a lot of these sisters, they are not very well informed in the sense of they are not understanding that. You know, is that, is that something you? Okay. Okay, keep going. Okay, so a lot of the, uh, oh, my mic is changing again. So, well, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh yeah, so a lot of sisters, um, they, they they tend to get into a, I would call it a rehabilitation program with brothers. They think that this, the way the brother is like this now, I will change him when he get married. When we get married. That, that's not how it works. Yeah. If you see the brother, you see the program is is is, is presenting to you. It doesn't fit into what you want as a, yes. as a home. Call it quits. Call it quits. And brother, if you see sister, she is the type that will give you a headache down the line. She's very, very um, <clears throat> materialistic. And you are the type of person that don't have that... Uh, all the elements that she's looking for. I mean, there are so many sisters that are to your level. Go to your level. Why are you trying to go above your level? Like, I mean, it's not, it's not always the case that you must marry a certain type of sister just because your friend is marrying that a certain type of sister or because your brother or your whatever is marrying a certain type of sister. You need to go according to how um, your level is. And a lot of times, a lot of brothers don't really, even after you pray and you, you see the sister, you don't take the time to analyze the sister in terms of how she fits into your program. Like, you don't want a sister to, to now derail you from your vision, like what we said from the beginning. Brother will have a vision of being a singer, and then you get married, <laughs> vision is gone. I mean, that, that is a disaster for a marriage because the, the brother will just be in the marriage and he's feeling like he's trapped. That's not, the marriage. That, that's not the marriage that we want as, as believers. We want a flourishing marriage where everybody is flourishing, the flower is blossoming, 
the sister is very happy, the brother is very happy, you know, and everyone is doing their best in their own capacity. Now, you mentioned examples of, of uh, Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, and all of that. I just want to say that those women, those women, their husbands, <laughs> their husbands are, are exceptional, right? It's not very easy for a man to be with a woman that is uh, Let's just be practical about it, mm -hmm. right? Let's be very, very practical. And I would also like to say that it is the exception to the rule. It's not the general, it's not the majority of men that will marry a <laughs> sister that is above them. Because number one thing with sisters is they do not, most times they do not marry that. So if they marry you and they're above you, this is obviously an exception to the norm, right? No, so, but okay, to go. me, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it as an example to highlight <laughs> to people because it's not very, very common. It's not but, very common. But from what I notice in those marriages, I see that those women actually grew into the role in the marriage, within the marriage. So that was, they didn't marry, I mean, Kamala, Kamala Harris did not just get married and become the vice president. She was married and maybe became, try married, went into politics, started the journey. It's a journey, oh, right? Yes. Please, uh, let's leave those examples. They are bad examples for <laughs> us as Christians because... They are bad examples. For us as Christians, because if we... Many people, and some of us online here, do not know the backstories of these people. Of these so ladies, let, okay. They are not good examples for what we are trying to portray, honestly. Well, well the, the example that you guys portray is the man is the provider. No, well, it doesn't no, no, mean no. that. No, 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 no. What, what we are trying to say is this. The woman can have $1 billion. Eh? Yes, yes. If she, if she handles her $1 billion eh? mm -hmm. as a daughter of Sarah, like the Bible says, yes. there will be no problem in that home. That's all we're saying. There's that temptation. It's also, it's also um, on the male side. There's, you understand what we are saying is if we if we move as we ought to move as believers, every other thing falls in place. Whether it is money, whether it is status or fame, if we, the problem is we are out of work, we are just you know doing our own things, following. That's the problem. We are not, and the, the sad part is when this kind of um, teaching is brought to our attention, we resist it. Some of us will say, oh, it's backward. The question is, how has it worked out for you? All these ones that we've been doing, has it worked out? Why not let's go back to what we ought to be doing? That's the whole point. Well, okay. I think this that, that uh, discussion is going to come another day. We're going to still go back to that topic about um, how to handle headship and very professional women. It's another topic because women that are leaders in their offices, in the society, and handling their homes. So is, does it mean that they cannot um, manage the two? Is it that this, this is something that cannot be you know, jungled together? That's a very important topic that I would like us to see because many ladies nowadays are always bringing it up, especially those very ambitious ladies. You see that topic coming up again and again, and they 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 tend to hit a rock with it and the men also you know they it's, it's we don't really get a smooth landing on that topic but it's a topic it's not really the topic for today but we're going to talk about it another time just to make it clear that even if you are this and this this is how you should comport yourself in the family yes go Robin now I know that uh, we say it's a topic for another day but this is what I will say to that effect we are the architects of our problems. Do you, why I say so is this. God says, this is the blueprint. But we start asking questions like, what if I just walk beside the blueprint? I'm not in the blueprint, but I'm just walking beside it. You see what I mean? All, I, I still stand by what I say. If we get the basics right, do you, do you know, if you listen to what you just said, what I heard was this. 
God said we should marry, we should be godly, we should follow this rule. But I want to compete with my fellow ungodly people that are pursuing this path. That is what you are. No, no, that, I don't understand what you no, mean. No, no, no. Uh, what, what do you mean compete? That is, you see, what you just said, you might not have observed it, but that is what it means. Because let me let me let me put it in plain terms. What is the scale of what is our scale of preference? Do you understand what I mean? What do we value? At, what do we put at number one place? If we put God at number one place, what it means that any other thing we do must be built on that. The problem happens when we displace God from that number one place and put something else. No, but you can be a, you can be a career minded person and still be godly. You don't understand what I mean. You can be a career minded person. The question yeah. is, what is primary? What is your primary? What comes first? Your family, your God, or your career? So are you trying to tell me that a woman, God created us all in his own image. Okay, as smart as you are, I could be as smart as you are, or maybe even I've used, yes. expanded my brain to be able to use it more. Yes. Are you trying to say that if I say woman, I am that kind of person who I've started a path in my life, career-wise, yes. yes. Does that make me go out of the blueprint of God? If the, don't and know, how does, does that no, affect the headship no. of the man I'm going to marry? If my no, no. path career-wise no. leads me towards We've leadership already, position or We've, giving more to my world. We have already addressed this thing several minutes ago. Do you know where we address it at the point of courtship? You see what I'm trying to say now? Okay. If you are convinced that that's your path, yes. once you enter, you see the, the problem, once you enter that relationship, you have agreed that you have, you and your husband has, have found a way, you understand, to integrate that your vision. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If, if, if it was done properly at that stage, then all these problems will not come up. You see what I'm trying to say now? Yeah, no, I was not talking about any problem. I'm not saying that there's going to be any problem. I'm no, saying no, you that... Were, no, you were trying to say about the balancing. It's already a problem when you start talking about balancing. Do you know why I say it's a problem? I'll, let me use myself as an example so as to make it simple. There are some things, there are some positions, job positions I can't take. Do you know why I can't take it? Let me it's put good. it in a clear term. <laughs> that she could understand. Maybe you are using too much of man speak. What he means by balancing is like when a lot of sisters use the word balancing in the in the relationship, they start to mean that he will start to compromise on some things that we initially agreed on. Right? So you are growing in that career. Okay, your duties as a as a wife start dwindling. That could start create problems in the marriage, right? So when you start, but correct me if I'm wrong, bro, Obi. <laughs> is that not what you're referring to? It it is part of it. That was why I I drew her attention back to the courtship part. The problem is this: I often tell people, again, this is my idiosyncrasy. I will not tell you. It's as, as much as I, in my power, what I can't do. I'm very careful what I say. The problem with many people is that they say things and down the line, they break it. Hmm. That is what I'm telling you. You don't understand why I'm telling you that this stuff you are talking about balance is already a problem. Why I say it's already a problem is this. For the man, most likely it's not going to be a problem. You see, the world is set. When I say this and people take it the wrong way, the world is setting people up for failure there's a blueprint i go back to that you can call it man's there's a blueprint we as believers we think we are wiser than god there are some opportunities some doors we should not enter because when we enter that door it's going to jeopardize some fundamental things it, it comes back to our topic for today conviction okay so you what see is, the job you don't take it because you you want to you already no you, you already know that it's going to breed some challenges that will jeopardize either your home or see the bible says we should be wise as serpents yes harmless as those. the bible also says the children of this of this world and their generation wiser than the children of light 
there are many things that we, when, when I hear it, I'm like, this should not be a problem. We should have already nipped it in the bud. There are some things we should not go into because we, we should already see where it's leading to. That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's just like the expedient talk you, you were talking about. Is yeah. it love or is it expedient? For example, yeah. now, there's this argument that I, I always find interesting. I used to give this example to a lot of sisters and they, they always, always give me almost the same answer. <laughs> I say, if a brother, let's say, for example, in the context of, of Nigeria uh, situation, let's say in Nigeria now, a brother is earning 200, let's say 300,000, is currently earning 300,000. Sister is a tech sister, tech babe, they should call them. Yes. She's earning, she's earning 1M at the point of their marriage. Now, yes. during their marriage, brother says, both of them, they are living in Lagos, right? Christian brothers living in Lagos. Marriage is going well. Sister is earning 1M. Brother is earning um, 300,000. 300, now, brother got a job down the line in Abuja and he's earning 600 or 700 for that job in Abuja, right? Mm -hmm. And he says to sister, sister, I got this job in Abuja and I'm earning 700. And there's a very high potential that my scale is going to be going higher and higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but you know, I love you so much as my wife. I cannot do without you, you're my backbone. Would you want to come with me to Abuja so we can live a happy home together? I know we are going to sacrifice one M, right? And you could find another job in Abuja or transfer yourself to Abuja. And I asked sisters, what would you do in that situation? Some of them would tell me what kind of nonsense. <laughs> what kind of nonsense example is that? What do you mean by that? Is it not simple logic that sister is earning one M? You so you want me to go and be suffering? Is that what you want? But you see, what we were saying all along is that if everything is lawful, is it expedient, right? Just because logically speaking, it doesn't make any sense for both of them to go to Abuja. But if you look at it in the long run, play the scenario, brother is in Abuja, sister is in, in Lagos. What do you think will happen eventually? Where? People will start sleeping up here and there. Uh, the brother will not be calling as often as possible. Sister will, will, will start, uh, you know, and before you know what's happening, the team will start having strain, you know. Some sisters will argue, oh, why don't you come in the weekend to Lagos? I mean, it's just a flight away now. Well, if you, if you, if you think about it, all the flights you are going to be spending, is it not still leveling up to that amount that you're avoiding to spend? Oh yeah, makes sense. Right? Mm -hmm. so, 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 but when you're having that conversation about let's move, sister will say, no, lie, lie. So you don't want me to move forward. You don't want me, you, oh, you're jealous of me. I see. You don't like my progress. Mm. Or some sisters will tell you, why do you need to take that job? It's not good now. I'm, I'm here. We are anyone. Else. At the end of the day, for me, I don't think either one of them are wrong. I just feel like know who you're getting married to, if it's going to be a problem, right, down the line. To avoid the problem, you need to take a decision that will, like, prevent that problem from happening. And I can speak for the guys. In most cases, the guys will find it very, very difficult to leave that job of 700 and let you be leading as the wife with one M. It's, it's a problem from generally, it's a problem because indirectly, there will be some side behavior that will ooze out the fact that, oh, after all, I'm the one providing yeah. for the house, you know? And those side behavior, it might not be said, but it's a very, very strong language that 
we hit the brother very, very hard. Okay, and with time, it, it will strain the relationship. So that's- At the I end of the that, day, it's all about choices. People should make their choice. Think about what is good for you, both of you in that marriage, in that relationship. We are not giving you like, hard and fast, so, you have so to do it like this. When you make the choice, make a video, write it and record it. So when you start complaining and blaming someone else, we can hold you to account. <laughs> well, it's your own marriage, it's your own home. You decide how you're going to build it together. You know, you try to understand what are the sacrifices of being this. If I want to maintain this, if I want to sit on this, if I want to insist on this, there's always sacrifice to every action. Whatever it is, whatever uh, height you want to attain in life, there's always sacrifices. So if you are ready to live with the sacrifices that will come or that you are ready to sacrifice this thing for this, then it's, it's left to you, right? So your priority, set your priority right. What's your priority? Is your priority my family first, my home first, before every other thing after? Or no, me, I'm career-minded, my career first and everything, and it goes on and go for it. So, and of course, at the end of the day, if you think that you cannot cope in a marriage, there is no need to go in there and you, there are other options, right? So why do you want to get married? It all starts from there. Why do you want to get married? Why do I want to get married? Why am I getting into this marriage? For what? What is your, what is your purpose for getting married? What is your goal? Uh, why you're getting married? That's a very key thing that you have to sit down and think about. So me, for example, I want to share my testimony, my, my story with you. I'll tell you, I wanted to be a, an interpreter, a world-class translator or interpreter, world-class. I wanted to be that. And I was going towards that path and I was doing well. I was in that direction. But I had discussed with one lady and she sat me down one day and told me, hey, I travel a lot. As you have come to my house, there's no soup. My house is dry and everything. But I'm a, I'm a, I think she was either a widow or um, she did a restitution. So she was married to somebody else's husband and you know they they parted ways so she had to leave that marriage because the guy had to go back to his former wife biblically so she's living alone and her children had grown so she could afford to live that kind of life and she's never around and she asked me do you think that you want to live your life like that having do you want to have children yes i do want to have children i said to her she said okay if you're going to have children and you're going to have a husband do you think that you will be able to travel today? You are off to Italy. Next tomorrow, you are off to Germany. The other one, you have gone to La, La Hague. Another time, you are in Japan. You are, do you think you can live that kind of life and your children are always, you know, never seeing you and always jumping about and your house is dry and you're not taking care? Do you think you can do this? Do you think that this is a sacrifice you're willing to make? Or do you want to be a single woman? And marry your career so it's your choice so but she said you know you can still do what you want to do but you can pave it out and do it another way you can do some freelancing you can do another kind of thing and it was one of the most sincere advice i've received from another fellow woman like me and so i thought about it and i made my own choice right i made my own choice on how i wanted to go with my life so at the end of the day people will advise you people will give you their suggestions and people will tell you what they think, they will share their own stories with you. It's left to you at the end of the day because it's only when you are in the show, in the middle of it, that you really understand uh, what, what people are telling you. Until after you get married, marriage, marriage comes with its own uh, strengths. And even those that get divorced, I can tell you that the hurt is intense because it's emotional. Marriage is emotional. And even when they break up, it's emotional and children are hurt. And it's a lot of tentacles that you have to, to, to deal with. And you don't want to get into it. It's better to be alone than to get into it. Because at the end of the day, you, you are broken. People that divorce, they are broken. The both of them. The man is broken. The woman is broken. The children are shattered. And it's it's a whole building the pieces together. You can tell you it's a, it's a big mess. Yeah. So, Mr. David, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add something before I forget it uh, is that um, you know a lot of people like to give examples of uh, to support what they believe in terms of the circular side of things. For example, a lot of um, women 
let me say in the world, for example, a lot of women listen to Beyonce, and Beyonce has this very popular song that says, we'll run the world, right, girls. And the funny thing is that hmm. the song is about being powerful as a woman and all of those things. And you see, well, if you really look at the life of Beyonce as a person, she's actually kind of like following the opposite of what she's telling them right for example there was reports about her husband cheating on her and all of that the whole world was saying divorce him this one divorce him that one she didn't do that what most cases if you listen to her song she will tell you strong woman do this do that do that right so why am i mentioning this is be careful what you listen to out there so there are some women that they know the real truth and they will not want you to you know to know those part of the whole thing at the end of the day she's just selling her music but she knows that for her to be in a true element it's very important to to keep the family unit intact you know you need to keep the family unit intact okay the devil is trying to attack uh, the whole world through the family unit once you have broken homes obviously you have broken children okay. once you have broken children you start having broken marriages mm -hmm. because because people generally tend to copy what they see in their parents right so don't just say okay this person is this that person is that and therefore if that person is doing this i can do it if it's not biblical, my brother and my sister, maintain your lane. Don't be following what <laughs> the, the general <laughs> world is doing. And after all, there's a lot of them that, that, are, that are seeing one thing in the camera and then doing the opposite, right, behind the camera. That's separating their professional life from their personal life. Exactly. To be able to understand people, that concept. Well, most people carry everything they say as gospel. And... Even a lot of pastors are the same. They will say something like this. They will do something different uh, uh, behind closed doors. So at the end of the day, the only saving grace for you is to look at how is the scripture handling this uh, issue of marriage? What is the pattern? Hmm. If the pattern is right, follow it. Yeah. And the pattern has existed for a very, very long time. It will not change. Modernity will not change anything. If they like, now we are even getting more complex with gender roles and all those things mm -hmm. because there are different genders. Everybody is identifying as different things. So it's even getting more complicated. I feel sorry for the next generation, actually, because now we are, now we are even struggling about, okay, equality and equality. The, the next generation is going to struggle with something even more complex than that. And if, if you as a Christian, you now conform to whatever is happening around you in the world. I'm sorry. You'll be very confused. You, ha you not even have a marriage in the first place. So that's just all I wanted to say. Well, thank you. I think it's a wrap. Thank you for all this. And um, biblical headship, just remember as a man, head, servant. Headship and servanthood go together. You can only be a leader when you're ready to serve. Okay? So if you're ready to serve, every other thing will fall into place. Don't worry, don't mind anything. Just tell yourself, when you go into marriage with the right concept, with the right mindset, your marriage will definitely work, okay? Don't mind every other thing. Pray, listen, cut well, discuss well, and everything will fall into place. So I pray, I think that's, that's, that's all that we have for you today. And I hope that somebody was got something from this. And remember that... The father of the Rechabites told them something. His life would have been a strong testament of what he said. And his dedication, his exemplary living is what those children held on to. And were able to stand before a prophet such as Jeremiah and say, our father said we should not drink wine. So as a father, as a husband-to-be tomorrow, whatever you're going to get into that marriage, what life 
are you going to leave? What example are you going to set in the family that you're going to build together to, tomorrow? But that will start from how you're living now. What are you building upon? What building blocks are you putting in place? What are you reading? What are you feeding on? What are the people that you follow? How do you read your Bible? How do you understand the scriptures? You know, so these are some of the building time for you. You build yourself up. You get yourself ready for marriage because you don't just fall, boom. I say, when I get into the marriage, I'll just figure it out. No, it takes a process. You have to build yourself. Build that your masculinity. Build that manhood. Build that headship. Build your leadership skills and work upon yourself. And I think that everything will be fine. But once you go with the right mindset, your marriage will definitely work out, okay? I think that's all that we have for you today. And um, we can call it a day. Thank you very much. And uh, we will see you next week. Next week, we're bringing, we want to talk about depression. And that's what we're going to be talking about next week. We're going to bring a specialist. I'll be talking about the topic of depression. How this, what's the difference? Can Christians be depressed? Can you be depressed as a Christian? That's something we're going to talk about next week. So get ready. Invite your friends. And with all that is we're seeing around us, we need to address that topic. God bless you. Thank you, Rao Bina, Dr. Obina. Thank you, Brother David. And um, thank you to everyone who has connected today. Thank you so much for staying out here. And um, thank you for connecting. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow the page. God bless you. Until next time, goodbye.